It's also the basis of the most fundamental female pornographic fantasy. And the Google guys figured that out, you know, 15 years ago when they analyzed billions of sex fantasy searches by men and women. Men go for visual imagery, but women go for story. And the story is the same. It's, you know, innocent young woman uh, with a lot to offer, but kind of hidden, find some male, five categories of men, vampire, werewolf, pirate, surgeon, billionaire, and he's, you know, kind of an aggressive guy, but he's capable of being tamed into an intimate relationship. That's the standard female pornographic fantasy, and it's pretty much the standard fantasy of romance. And so you can see, you know, what women are trying to do in that situation is they're trying to find some guy that's got the capacity for mayhem, but that's under control, but who can integrate that into a productive, generous, reciprocal relationship. So, well. It's fascinating because that the, the capacity for violence and the capacity for aggression is one of the things that's been actively muted yeah. in our male population. Yeah, yeah well, it's a, it's, there's a bunch of reasons for that. And I, some of them turn into positive feedback loops, like they're sort of self-fulfilling prophecies. So there's a lot of women out there who've never had a positive relationship with any male in their life, right? And maybe not only not a positive relationship, but really a series of pretty negative relationships. And so women like that are very leery of any expression of male ability of any sort, because they can't distinguish productive competence from arbitrary power. And because they're trying to defend themselves because they've been hurt repeatedly, maybe they come from broken families and catastrophically arranged neighborhoods. You know, one of the tactics that can be used in that situation is just to try to do everything you can to distance yourself as much as you can from any display of male ability, because it can't be distinguished from psychopathy can't be distinguished from the use of power. It takes a sophisticated woman to be able to make that distinction. So the other thing you see too is that young women are much more likely to be seduced by psychopaths than older women. Because the psychopaths mimic competence. That's what a narcissist does too. They're, all, they're confident and women read confidence as a marker of competence and that's reasonable. But that opens up the, what would you, it opens up the space for exploitation. Because if you can mimic confidence that's false confidence, narcissistic false confidence, then you look competent, and that works particularly well on naive young women. Mm. And of course, they get exploited by people like that, and they think, well, that's what men are like. Right. Yeah. Men and women like that, you know, they have boys, and then they're afraid of the boys whenever they express anything looking like masculine competence, and they basically emasculate the boys, and then the boys get bitter, and then they mistreat women, and the whole bloody thing just spirals out of control. And so... And that's where we are. That's where we are. Yeah. <laughs> what a strange yeah. place to be, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, well, yeah. Unintended consequence of familial breakdown. That's a huge part of it.